स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू टूडे लेक्चर इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी स्टार्टेड डिस्कसिंग द क्वांटम मैकेनिकल सोल्यूशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एटम प्रॉब्लम वी डिफाइंड हाइड्रोजन एटम्स हेमिल्टोनियन इन टर्म्स ऑफ द काइनेटिक एनर्जी एंड द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड द काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑपरेटर ऑफ द हेमिल्टोनियन एटम हेमिल्टोनियन फॉर द हाइड्रोजन एटम हार्ड ए काइनेटिक एनर्जी कंट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम द न्यूक्लियस एंड देन द काइनेटिक एनर्जी कंट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम द इलेक्ट्रॉन वी रिप्लेस्ड this kinetic energy uh, operator which had electron and nuclear coordinate dependence to two one body problems where one the first one body problem was the movement of the center of mass the second one was the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the internal motion of the hydrogen atom when we say internal motion we talk about the relative distance between the electron and the nucleus in the hydrogen atom we then imposed a separation of variable for the solution of this internal hamiltonian we said that the eigen function of the hydrogen atom would depend on r theta and phi all three coordinates of the spherical co uh, spherical uh, coordinates and then we said that the let the eigen function be a product of a radial function and an angular function we then used this ang variable separation uh, process onto the our onto our schrodinger equation of the hydrogen atom hamiltonian and then we removed the uh, the angular component of the wave function and we introduced a new effective potential which had which depended on the angular momentum of the the electron so this is where we had so if you look at this uh, wave equation this has turned become actually a radial wave equation because we have taken care of the angular part by applying the only angular operator that we had that was lisandrian on the angular part component of the wave total wave function so therefore what we have see here is that the hydrogen atoms uh, schrodinger equation has been converted to this uh, new radial wave equation where we we have this effective potential which is the sphere uh, we can see a coulombic potential and a centrifugal potential together these two uh, potentials they provide the stability to hydrogen atom now we would continue our discussion and uh, looking at how we can solve uh, this radial uh, wave equation we have this equation now we take one uh, we do one little exercise what we do is that we divide the energy term e which is a constant uh, of, of of this of this equation in all these term so you can see that my e term is divided here and the first term and the the second term i have divided 1 over e but you would see why i have done that but some i have what i have done is that h square h bar square divided by 2 mu into 2 mu divided by h bar square so they are they essentially cancel out so at the, at the end all i have is 1 over e but we would see uh, in a minute why i would uh, i have written it in this way the this term we simply have h square by h bar square divided by 2 mu and then the energy is there and i have brought this e divided by e that is 1 u of r to the left hand side and i have written down this equation now what we would do is that we would define a new variable that is k square as minus 2 mu e divided by h bar square so we would remember this uh, definition in particular we'll come back to this if i write down the definition of k so this is what it is k is minus square root of minus 2 mu e divided by h bar that's how you have defined k square when i define this k square you can see that this term becomes 1 over k square here and then h square by 2 mu e that becomes minus 1 over k square and i have multiplied this 2 mu 
divided by h bar square into the coulombic potential here. So, you can see that this 2 and 4 they have cancelled out. So, I am left with a uh, 2 here. When I look at the second uh, the centrifugal put term, I see that h, h bar square 2 mu e has been changed to minus 1 over k square because of this definition and then we have written down this equation. Now, we see that we have this equation in term in, uh, written down in the coordinate of r. We now introduce another coordinate rho which is given by k times r. If you check the dimensionality of k, you would see that k has the dimensionality of length inverse. So, when I multiply this k with r, I actually get this rho which is a dimensionless coordinate. We have already seen the advantage of using a dimensionless coordinate in case of harmonic oscillator problem. So, again here also in this hydrogen atom also problem also we are defining this dimensionless coordinate rho which is simply multiplication of k into r where k is given by this. When I do this you see that I have since rho is defined as k r. So, therefore, k square d r square is simply d rho square. So, these two term have become d rho square and here I have r k square. So, r k would give me a rho and I will be left with 1 k. So, therefore, this k rho is equivalent to r k square and I have this r square k square converted to rho square. Now, I have simplified this equation inst instead of writing u as a function of r, I am writing it as u as a function of rho. The difference is that r is a dimensioned quantity, rho on the other hand is a dimensionless uh, variable. So, here if we look we have this term over here and we are we will give a short name for this term we call this term as rho 0 this term over here. So, that we have now this radial u wave equation in, in this simple form. So, I have the second derivative term over here. So, of u which is now expressed in terms of rho and now dip my differentiation is in terms of the dimensionless coordinate rho. Please remember dimensionless coordinate is coming from by multiplying this k with, with r and then I have this right hand side. So, what I have done in this exercise is that I have converted my radial wave equation corresponding uh, from u of r to u of rho and I am my equation is now written down in terms of the dimensionless coordinate rho. Now, the solution of this equation has been shifted to the to the uh, solution of this. So, now we would try to solve this particular equation which is the radial wave equation in dimensionless code. So, we have this this is the same radial wave equation that we uh, derived in the uh, previous slide. So, now we see we have it some term in the left hand side or some term in the right hand side. I have this u of rho whose form I would try to obtain once I know u of rho and that will be the solution of this equation. The way we will solve this uh, equation is that we would first break it down to its asymptotic solution. That means, it is uh, the solution of this uh, equation we try to find out when r or the distance between electron and nucleus are very large and where r that is the distance between electron and nucleus uh, is very small. In these two asymptotic region we we'll try to find the solution first and then we talk about the solution of this e uh, equation in the middle region in the intermediate region. First we will discuss about the asymptotic solution at large r. So, that means when r goes to very large value that means r goes to infinite since rho is defined as k into r. So, rho also goes to goes infinite. When I write down this equation you would see I am now using normal derivative instead of partial derivative because I see that my equation uh, the differential equation has one variable that is uh, rho. So, therefore, I can write the normal differentiation here. 
this equals to the right hand side. When I look at the right hand side, rho has become very large. So, therefore, this term 1 over rho will become 0 and this term 1 over rho square would also become very uh, 0. So, therefore, these two terms will become very small. So, therefore, I can ignore that and I will be left with this. Now, I have here a second order homogeneous differential equation whose solution I already uh, know. I, I have what is the what is its solution? It, it can have a solution of e to the power rho or e to the power minus rho. So, these two possible solution I would provide two constants a and b. So, that it tells that since I have these two possible solution I would see which of the solutions are uh, uh, which of the solution contribute to my uh, overall solution by what extent. This will be given by this constants a and b. Now, before we carry forward our discussion, let us consider first case when E is greater than or equal to 0. That means, E is positive. If you remember this k is defined as minus 2 mu E under square root divided by h bar and the rho is r into k. So, when I look at this solution for E greater than or equal to 0, I have I see the solution since E is greater than or equal to 0. So, E is positive and I have a minus 1 in the uh, under the square root. So, therefore, this comes out as a imaginary root. So, I have So, these are the two solutions that I, I get when r is very large and E is positive. What do I see here? Here in this equation, in this solution, I see that I have an e to the power i r kind of term, which can be converted to a cosine function and sine function. This cosine function sine and sine function, even at very large value of r, they would still not become 0 they would also not become infinite rather they would have a finite value because this is the sum of a cosine function and a sine function which are bound between plus 1 and minus 1. So, therefore, this, the, this wave function even at large r where r goes to infinite would still not become 0 rather it will remain finite and it would it will show uh, a sinusoidal and cosine, cosine uh, oscillation. So, this wave function that I am obtaining indicates you see what happens is that when r is close to infinite that means, the electron is far far away from the nucleus. So, these solutions indicate when the electron has completely left the field of the field of influence of the nucleus and this electron behaves as a free particle free electron with no further interaction with the nucleus. So, that gives rise to positive or 0 energy of the of the uh, of the electron and the solution of that is unbound solution because we cannot normalize this function because this function does not become zero at r equals infinite so this solution gives me to a problem of as the solution of free electron or free particle and the solutions are unbound i would now come to the other case where e is negative or e is less than or equal to e is less than 0. When e is negative, I see there is already a negative sign here. So, this term overall becomes positive and k is real. So, when e is neg uh, negative, u of rho is a e to the power rho plus b e to the power minus rho. Here rho is, is now real and when r goes to infinite or uh, therefore, rho also goes to infinite and since this is a real quantity unlike this quantity where this is imaginary that the, the nice thing about imaginary function is that even at r equals infinite it will uh, remain finite. But since rho is now real you see when I have large value of rho this function will diverge. 
this function will become infinite. So, I cannot have this as a solution to this uh, my, my uh, wave function. So, therefore, I will impose the condition that a has to be 0. So, therefore, u of rho is simply uh, I am writing a proportionality uh, constant because there will be a, uh, this is proportionality relation because I have this constant over here. So, asymptotic solution for the bound state prop bound state solution that means, even when uh, we are discussing about those situation when r is large, but still the electron is under the within the influence of the uh, the nucleus. So, in those bound states my asymptotic solution of this wave function will be e to the power minus rho. We will keep this in mind and we will go to the next limit that is asymptotic solution when r is very small. Again, when r is when r is very small that means r is r goes to 0 that means the electron and nuclear nuclei nucleus are very close uh, uh, close to each other in that case of course rho also goes to 0 and my equation over here the differential equation the radial wave equation becomes when i look at this term the second term has 1 over rho the first term is simple 1 so, when rho is very small, rho 0 by rho will be a very large term compared to 1 and furthermore, this third term, this term will be even greater than the second term and of course, uh, the, the first term. So, therefore, when rho in the limit rho goes to 0, I have only this term which will become very uh, significant compared to the other term. So, I keep only that term. And now, I have this differential second order differential equation, where the, the function is u of rho and the coordinate that I am differentiating with is, is rho. The solution of this differential equation we would not derive them rather we would uh, use them. It can have two possible solution. One is rho to the power uh, minus l, another is rho to the power l plus 1 these are the two possible solutions of this problem. And again, I am just writing two uh, coefficients c and d to define that okay, both these solutions are uh, possible and which of the solution would contribute how much will be given by this c and d constants. So, this is the general solution for the for small value of r. Now, when I look at this term closely, I see that when rho is very small this particular function rho to the power minus l. So, this is 1 over rho to the power l. So, when rho is very small this term will become very large or it will at rho equal 0 this term will become uh, become infinite. So, therefore, I I would invoke that let this c coefficient become 0. So, that the contribution of this function is is vanishing. So, that would leave me with this that So, now what I have obtained here is that at small value of r where the electron and nucleus are very close to each other the asymptotic solution will have rho to the power l plus 1 type of form and earlier we had discussed when for asymptotic solution for large value of uh, r we had the asymptotic solution of this uh, wave function u would become e to the power minus rho. So, this solution is asymptotic solution at small r, this solution is the asymptotic solution at very large r. Now, we will combine this information that we have and then write down this general equation sorry the general solution which says that okay, if you remember we started our discussion by writing down this radial wave equation in terms of rho which is the dimensionless coordinate here. 
we wanted to solve this equation. The way we solved this equation is that we first took its asymptotic solution at large values of rho and we got e to the power minus rho. Then we looked at its asymptotic solution at very small value of rho. We saw that the asymptotic solution would say uh, gives us rho to the power l plus 1 a type of term. This is for one part of the asymptotic solution, this is for the small value of r, but what about the main body of the solution? The main body of the solution we still have to determine and we have given this name as v. So, this v of rho is still unknown. What we have obtained here is that our the solution that we are proposing would have e to the power minus rho, rho to the power l plus 1. So, that the asymptotic forms of this solution is correct, is, is uh, meaningful, but we are still left with solving this v of rho. That we can do. So, that now you can see that we have we have a form for this u of rho. We can very well put this uh, form of u in this uh, radial wave equation and you see that this requires a second uh, differentiation, second level differentiation with respect to rho. So, if when I obtain d square u by d rho square, I would see that I have these three terms. So, I will have to take care of uh, uh, this complex uh, differentiation and then in the right hand side, I simply have to multiply this. When I do this, I am not going to do that part. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, use this solution of u in this equation and come down to this relation here. Look what have had, what we have here is that we have now a new differential equation which is expressed in terms of not in terms of u rather in terms of v. How did we come to he, come to this position? We came here because we have obtained the asymptotic solutions of this u and we employ we used this asymptotic solution into the radial wave equation and we have left with this v. Now, the angular momentum part is present rho 0 if you remember we defined this uh, defined this quantity in terms of mu uh, energy z and other other uh, constants of the problem. Now, if you look at this differential equation, you see that this is a second order differential equation in terms of v as a function of rho, which is the dimensionless coordinate. Now, the task at our hand is be has become that how can we solve this uh, differential equation, but before that we would find out what or we would have some discussion about what could be my v of rho. What is v of rho? v of rho is the main body solution of my hydrogen atom problem. This I am expecting to uh, this function I am expecting to be a rather complex function uh, rather a, a complicated function complex not in the sense of real and complex. I am expecting that this function will be uh, a, a complicated function. What I would do is that I would st start defining that let my v of v of rho b, I will expre uh, express that in terms of what is known as a power series e expansion. So, this is a series expansion that I am calling, I am using, I am expressing my v the unknown function as a power series expansion. What do I mean here? You see this is the general form where j goes from 0 to infinite. The advantage of this power series is that if you see the first term, so this is rho to the power j, it can be when it is 0, this is rho to the power 0, so therefore uh, uh, 1, when j is 1, this is simply rho, when j is 2, this is rho square. So, I am expressing this function v as a sum of a different a polynomial uh, uh, function where I can have rho to the power 1, rho to the power 2, rho to the power 3 and so on and so forth. The first term will be simply b 0, the second term b will be b 1 rho, the third term will be b 2 rho square, the fourth term will be b 3 rho to the power q and so on and so forth. So, this is what the power series expansion does. What is the advantage of it? You see when I do not know how complex my how complicated my solution will become, it can be a very simple function or a very complicated function. But if I express this as a power series expansion, I have now a tool to allow 
to define this function in a functional form with no matter how complicated it becomes I always have a higher order term that can be called in and then you can express this particular complicated function. For example, when I truncate my series at the first level I simply have a constant. When I truncate my series here I have simply y plus m x plus c. If I if I look at if I go to the second order, uh, second order term I can have I can define a more comp complicated function. So, in this way I have the provision of defining any compli complicated function. So, if v is defined as this way I can write down as d v by d rho is simply j goes from 0 to infinite j v j rho to the power j rho to the power j minus 1 because I am differentiating this function with respect to uh, rho. Alternatively, I can write this equation as I replace j as j plus 1 since this is an infinite series that will not have much of an effect. So, I replace j as j plus 1. So, therefore, j minus 1 has become j and similarly, I can write d square v by d rho square as j equal, j goes from 0 to infinite j into j plus 1 b j plus 1 rho to the power j minus 1. So, I am differentiating this term. So, now what by defining v as a power series expansion term I have d v by d rho and d square by d. Now, this is the differential equation I had. Now, I see that I have defined v here. I have d v by d rho, I have d square v by d rho square when I and I have expressed them in terms of this b, b j which are the coefficients. When I use these relations in this equation, I would encourage you to do it, you would see that I will come back come to this relation which is known as the recursion relation. that actually connects my b j to b j plus 1. In, uh, in today's class, we have come to certain point in the discussion of our quantum mechanical solution of hydrogen atom. We have come to this recursion relation and we will continue our discussion on this problem in our next class by looking at the solution of this radial wave equation. Thank you for your attention.